Hey there, this is Niels Beardford, and today we are building a shield from leather and foam. Usually I would start with printing out the pattern and transferring on the leather, but this time I used a laser to engrave the artwork and mark all the lines. After this I moisture the leather and cut it out. When the leather is mostly dry but still cool on the touch, we can start with our tooling. What the laser engraving did is replacing the swivel knife for me. With Webbler I went along all the lines and now use a stone to get some rustic effect, as well as I using the swivel knife to get some cutting edges in. For more details on tooling the artwork you can check out my other videos. Since this artwork is very personal, for me it will not be included in the pattern. When punching the round holes along the edge, make sure you don't make the same mistake like I did and only punch them on the front side. I will later explain why. For the buckle we want to thin out one side of the edges here to make the surface more smooth. After tooling we want to get some paint on, use a spray gun, sponge or other technique that you like. Use some resist to prepare it for the antique gel. After two coats of resist, put on the antique gel, rub it in all the deep cracks and cuts and remove all the rest. After that I recommend another coat of resist to secure the antique gel. For the buckle the technique is a little bit different, you want to moisten it and shape it into its roughly shape and then start sewing. You want to remove all the excess leather along the edge and then let it dry. Now we can start painting. In my case I wanted to get a used metal look, so I used the combination of resist and epoxy powder to get this effect done. Then I put on some antique gel in black and rub everything off to make it nice and shiny with another coat of resist. To complete the buckle you want to moisten the buckle ring and shape it a little bit upwards so it fits around the buckle itself. To give the buckle more stability use some soft foam in round shapes and glue them stackwise onto each other and shape them to make them fit into the buckle. Measure out the diameter of the buckle, mark this on the shield front and punch some sewing holes. Make sure you got the same number on the buckle as well as on the shield. Then you want to rough up the center of the shield front, put on some contact cement and glue it on. Attach the buckle ring with some glue and rivets.
For the handle we need some straps of leather that we want to stackwise glue onto each other. So we got multiple layers of uh, the same shape, just shorter. We want to stack them onto each other, so we thin out the ends to make them smoother. And then we moisten them and bring them into their shape. We are looking for a slightly outwards curved handle. So I get a piece of wood with about the diameter of the hole on the back side and shape the handle pieces around it, still moist, and then rough them up and glue them together. Of course you don't want to rough up the highest layer. To line up the different layers use a knife and sandpaper. When the handle is completely done, position it on the back side, mark the edges and rough up the leather there. Put on some contact cement and glue the handle on. Also when you glue on the handle, position the D-rings if you want to. To get through all these layers of leather, I recommend drilling holes for sewing right through. When sewing, you really want to put your effort on this to make sure the handle is completely secured. To hide the holes a little bit, you want to re-dye them. Now about the foam core, you want to use one of the leather front or back, transfer the edges on the foam and cut it out. I use two layers of ultra high density EVA foam here with one centimeter thickness together with some low density EVA foam, also one centimeter thick. This way the shield became super strong, but actually I think one layer of ultra high density foam would have been enough. After cutting everything out, you want to put on some contact cement and use the center hole as reference when gluing them together. To cover up the grey color of the foam, I use some black stretchy fabric. So now all three layers are ready to assemble and this is what we do. And this is where I noticed that I should have punched the round holes along the edge only on the front side. Because then, after smoothing out the edge, I would drill through both layers. So I would glue the front in before I do these drills. So the holes would be aligned perfectly by nature. And this way I had the mistake and I had to position them perfectly myself. So now afterwards I glue on the front side. Around the edge I glue another coat of 1.5 cm thick foam that is very soft.
for the edge sewing, you want to moisten your edge piece completely and let it set for a few minutes. And after this, sew it on the edge. The difficult part here is to find the holes on the other side of the shield, but with good drilling this should work out. Also there are some extra holes on the edge piece to make sure if something does not line up you still have enough material to work with. Well that's it already. I hope you liked this. In the end I thought I could have done some things better, but I quite like it. It turned out a little bit on the heavy side with 2 kilos, but for this it's super strong. Check out this pattern in my shop, links down below, and see you guys next time. Ciao!